a somatic practice to relieve problems within the shoulders. This is a practice to open the chest, freeing movements in the upper back and regaining control of the muscles of the shoulders. Begin your practice in somatic scan. Laying the body out, allowing the weight to sink into the floor. Noticing what comes into your awareness most strongly as you first reach the ground. We'll draw our attention on the outset to the position of the shoulders and the shoulder blades. So notice what kind of conversation your upper back and shoulders are having with the floor. Most notably, does it feel as though both arms and shoulders are in a similar position to one another? Even down to the details of which fingers and knuckles touch the ground between the left and the right hands. As you bring your awareness up through the forearms, notice how much space you have at the tops of the shoulders. Are your shoulders deeply sunken into the ground or is there a space that could slide a hand underneath? How easily does your inhale fill your chest and create space across the front of the body? Noticing how relaxed the neck and the back of the head can be into the ground. As you allow the next few breaths to unravel any tension within the body. Start to file the information that you have on your initial scan into your brain. And when you're ready, we'll slide up the feet so the knees become bent. Creating a nice balance in the front of the thighs and working quite quickly towards your arch and your flatten. So inhaling and arching, rolling the tail away and exhaling and flattening. So working with a rather familiar movement of taking the pelvis down a straight line. But bringing your attention and your focus to the movement of the spine. So as the pelvis rocks neatly back and forth within the hip sockets, can you feel the transitional movements traveling up vertebra by vertebra through the spine? Noticing as you do so and seeing how far up through the body that sensation is detectable. Can you notice what happens with the chin and the back of the head as you arch and flatten? Could you imagine where the movement would come in the upper back and the chin and the chest as you take that oscillation of the pelvis? further out that you can push that movement, the more aware we become of the wholeness of the spine and how it affects from just the tail but all the way up through the lumbar curve into the thoracic, back of the neck and into the back of the head.
And to advance that movement a little more, we'll bring in the movement of the arch. So the next time you arch on your inhale, you will roll the arms upwards towards the thumbs. Imagine the arms are little like rolling pins. You roll the arms up. And then as you exhale, you'll flatten and roll all the way down, rolling the arms inwards, back onto the thumbs again. Inhale, rolling all the way out, slowly, slowly dropping the shoulders down into the floor, lifting the chest up as you arch, rolling up onto the thumbs. Exhale and flatten, rolling everything in. Picking up the shoulders as you roll inwards, tightening everything along the chest and opening the back. Inhaling and arching, opening everything through the front body and reducing everything in the back body. So how smooth and coordinated can you be? Pelvis into spine, spine into shoulders, shoulders into arms arms down to hands. Can you close on the exhale at the front and open at the back? Open on the inhale at the front and close at the back. And to shift this movement a little more deeply into shoulders, this time pick up the hands and squeeze them to the sides of the thighs. Inhaling, rolling all the way out. Exhaling, rolling all the way in. Picking up the hands, squeezing in, lifting the shoulders tightly up towards the ceiling. Inhaling, dropping the shoulders down, rolling the arms all the way out, squeezing the shoulder blades back behind you. Reaching the chest up and rolling all the way in. This is a beautiful movement to do if you've been stuck sitting for a long period of time, opening up both the chest and the upper back muscles. Each time you pandiculate by drawing in, you open the back. And then when you come in again, you're able to reach a little further. As you complete the one that you're on, slowly releasing the shoulders down into the floor, relaxing the arms back by the side. Turn it all off and enjoy the sensation in the back of the shoulders. Do you notice a difference about the rise and fall or ease of the breath? as you inhale. We draw this movement down and around now. So taking the hands and interlocking behind the back of the head, allowing the elbows to drop out towards the side. Keeping the hands relatively low on the back of the skull, drop the elbows. We'll take an arch and curl movement, remembering to keep the head heavy as you possibly can. Inhaling to arch, press the elbows down. As you exhale and flatten, draw the elbows towards one another, aim chin to chest, vertebra by vertebra, curl only as far as you are comfortable. As you inhale out, keep the head as heavy as you are able. Slowly opening the body out long, elbow to elbow, across the muscles of the chest. Exhale, drawing in. Keep the weight of the head as heavy as possible. Slowly, slowly, relaying the spine to the floor each time you come down. Utilizing the inhale with a small press of the elbows, lengthening the chest long. Exhale. Everything draws in. The shoulder blades open at the back, creating space. I'll take that one more time.
releasing the hands from the back of the head when you finish that one. Turning it all off for just a moment. Noticing the position of the shoulders into the floor after those movements. Ease of the breath in the chest. And then when you're ready, if you'd like to roll over onto your side, taking any support for your head, we'll take some shoulder circles. So moving your support down so you can feel comfortable. Balance tail to the back of the head, knees are bent. Feel nice and comfortable throughout. And then resting your top arm on your hip. And then bringing your full attention to your whole sh shoulder girdle. And we'll start this movement by drawing the shoulder and shrugging it up towards your ears. So slowly drawing the shoulder all the way up. And then releasing to neutral. So drawing, shortening the muscles at the top of the shoulder. This is an action that we're really good at normally. And then slowly letting it go. Gaining as much control as you can over the transition of drawing up and releasing down. And then when you reach neutral this time, we'll take it in the opposite direction. So reaching the arm down, away from the ear. Making it long and to neutral. Away. Take that one more time. And then you, when you release back out this time, you'll draw all the way up towards the ear. Creating that longest line, drawing all the way up and all the way down. Pausing at neutral as you next pass by. This time I'd like you to shorten in the chest muscles, so drawing the shoulder in towards center, forwards. Keeping the arm nice and relaxed, sliding the shoulder forwards and back to neutral. How much control, how much glide and slide do you have in the muscles of the chest and the movement of the shoulder blade? And this time as you draw forward, will be your last, you'll pause at neutral. Finding neutral again, you'll take the movement in the opposite direction. So this time opening the chest, drawing the shoulder blades towards one another behind you. And back to neutral. So finding that movement of pressing the chest forwards. Add both movements together, so drawing all the way forwards with the shoulder, shortening the muscles of the chest as you roll in, and then all the way back and out. Seeing how smoothly you can take that transition back and forth. Back for the last time. 
drawing to neutral and pausing there for just a moment. And then we're going to take a full circle. So joining all those movements together, drawing the shoulder up towards the ear first. We'll roll all the way forwards. All the way down. All the way back. And all the way back up. So sometimes it can be helpful to imagine that you have a pencil sticking out the top of the shoulder and you're drawing the most circular line you are able with your shoulder. You can ask yourself how circular your circle is. your arm nice and relaxed and just allowing it to come along for the ride. And then changing direction, going the other way around. Again, seeing how smooth and how you've changed direction the muscles are. You're using opposing muscles to go in the other direction. So it can take some time for the brain to catch up and control those muscles this way around. And you've completed that circle. We'll just pause there. Turning everything off for a moment. Just settle in the stillness. And then when you're ready, we'll come over onto the other side. So rolling over, setting yourself up, ready to move in the other shoulder. Lining head with tail. Softening the palm, bending the knees, placing the top arm on the top hip. And this time we'll take the shoulder in a different direction first. So drawing the shoulder forwards and shortening the muscles of the pectorials, so the chest muscles become shorter. And back to neutral. Seeing how smoothly you can take that. Is there a drastic difference between the movement of this shoulder and that of the other? What is your glide and slide like? And then this time, when you go backwards, we'll go back to neutral. And we'll take it in the opposite direction, so drawing all the way back, sliding the shoulder blades towards one another, the chest comes forward a little, and back to neutral again. As you draw forwards at the end of this one, keeping on going and taking the longest line all the way forward and all the way back. Seeing how smoothly how cleanly your line draws itself forward and back.
pausing in neutral when you next pass by. And then drawing the shoulder up towards the ear this time. So reducing the space at the top of the shoulder and back to neutral. As you lower down this time, we'll go from neutral, reaching through the arm, down and away from the ear, lengthening the top of the shoulder, and back to neutral. Noticing which direction is the easier, smoother direction for your body. all the way up this time, all the way down. You need to stop the brain from wandering off keeping it focused on the movement of the shoulders. As you come up through neutral next, turning that straight line into a full circle, aiming it all the way down, all the way back, all the way forward. How relaxed and easy, how smooth and light can you make the movement within your body? Imagining the movement of the muscles gliding and sliding against one another with ease. And if your movement is a little jumpy or jerky or shaky, try reducing the size of your circle it is a little smaller, make the movement a little slower until your brain can catch up to control the movement of the muscles. Changing direction whenever you're ready, taking it back the other way around. Again, it highlights some of the areas that you may struggle with a little more to have some mobility Are you relaxing everything else in the body too as you move the shoulder around? Be it the muscles of the face or legs or hands. And then whenever you are ready and you feel that the circles that you have done have cut out a deep enough groove, pausing, turning it all off for just a moment. And then taking the support that's underneath the head and laying it a little thinner so the head tilts a little to one side. So you have a slightly less support underneath your head. It's useful for that support to be a little wider too. You'll come palm on palm. And this time you're going to reach the top hand forwards of the bottom hand, sliding and rolling the body a little towards the forehead and nose. And then gradually rolling back. And bit by bit you'll roll back a little further each time. So there are many areas we could focus on within this posture. However, here we're looking at that movement of the shoulder blades sliding across the ribs.
And gradually, each time that you take the movement, you'll come back a little further, making sure that your shoulder blade of your top arm reaches the floor before your arm does. And once that shoulder blade is comfortably towards the ground, you can start to unravel that top arm a little more. This posture not only acts as a beautiful way to free the movements in the upper body, but it has the added bonus of massaging out the underlying arm. Making it easy and lazy and as enjoyable as possible. And then when you next come palm on palm, pausing just there for a moment. Settling again in the stillness. And then as soon as you're ready, we'll swap the body over to the other end. So we can roll out the other side. Stacking knee over knee, the tail lined up at the back of the head, palm on palm. A nice reached out mat so that you can support the head as you roll, sliding that top hand forwards of the bottom hand. And coming back smoothly and slowly, bit by bit. Rolling out the back of the shoulders as you move. Keeping your body weight as deeply in contact with the floor as you can. Again, you may find that one side is a little more stubborn to unravel than the other. Taking as much time and as many repetitions as feels right for you until the shoulder comes down towards the floor. And once that shoulder, that top shoulder reaches the ground, only then can you comfortably start to unravel the arm and draw it back in. And if you're ready, you can pause and from that pause, rolling over onto your back with your knees bent, taking any movements on your journey over, ideally removing any support out from underneath the head so you have a true neutral, softening the arms. Bring the knees to a comfortable position. And then come back to your arch and flatten. So to recall back to the beginning, our arch and flatten was focused on the lift and the lowering of the chest. So as you inhale an arch, noticing the chest rise, as you exhale and flatten, It is the roll of the shoulders, the lifting and the lowering of the chin as you take the breath. Do you have any greater sense of ease as the spine and the pelvis oscillate? Does 
the breath fill the chest cavity in a different way to the way it did before. As you're ready, lengthening out both of the legs. Turning everything off. Thinking your position. Letting everything go into the floor. Before taking out of that library of images that you had at the beginning of the practice, of your position and the way that the chest opens and falls. A conversation that the shoulder blades are having with the ground. The both shoulders feel as though they sink into the floor evenly or rise up towards the ceiling in the same way. The weight through both biceps down to forearms and the position of the hands. You've gleaned all there is to glean. Turn off all the analysis. Allow the body to rest. And turn the mind to neutral. Deepening your breath whenever you are ready. Feeling that sense of deepening, encouraging movement in the fingers and the toes. Reaching and awaking the body in any way that would make you feel more comfortable. Maybe adapting or changing your position. Slowly waking up in your own time. 